Good evening. It's Ostara evening, so I hope everyone has um, fun plans uh, for the holiday. Um, I wanted to do a video response to a cricket song from Mom. Mom calls me Sherry. Uh, she had done a video uh, concerning uh, sacrifice and equivalent exchange, and um, asked viewers what their how they would define those terms whether they consider them the same thing and how it might apply um, in their own lives and those are really good questions and I wanted to throw in my two cents um, I actually I actually have two pennies which is uh, pretty unusual for me and I'll get into that uh, into why in a moment but um, first sacrifice historically speaking uh, sacrifice has it's basically economic based uh, people and, and this is a surprise but anyway um, I individuals would would essentially gift something to other individuals or to other groups um, between tribes um, later um, between uh, the individual and the state whatever their leader might be, and of course, um, you know, people and gods. Um, so a, a sacrifice is equivalent to a gift. Um, you provide something, and you expect something in return. It's, it's not so much... I mean, in some systems it was a, a form of payment, in some it was political courting. Um, you would provide it and then there would be an expectation of something in return. Birthdays are a really good example of that. If you and a friend um, you know, celebrate gift exchange, then you're sacrificing something by giving a gift on your friend's birthday. There's no guarantee that you'll get something. There's not like a stated contract that says I give you this and you give me something later but since you want to maintain a certain relationship there's kind of an expectation that that, that exchange will happen at, the, at a later date kind of the same thing with uh, with sacrifice to the gods you uh, there's there's archaeological evidence in Scandinavia where 30 caribou are drowned in a lake. Their hides weren't removed, um, the sinew, the bones, the, the meat, it was all intact. They had been killed and heavy stones placed in the ribcage and then sunk to the bottom of the lake. It was a sacrifice from a group of people, um, a group of, a, a tribe or a nomadic group, to their gods. We're not really sure why. Um, but they didn't directly benefit from that. Um, a lot of groups will, in this case, sacrifice animals, but then they will participate um, in the ritual by then consuming the flesh, so there's no waste. But in that example, the entire animal is, is given over, essentially. So we assume there's an expectation for, uh, that the, the gods would return something of equal value. And a lot of us would focus on the animal itself as the sacrifice, but that's just the essentially the material leftovers of the sacrifice. The sacrifice by the nomadic group was collecting those animals, you know, uh, wasting the energy and one safety to hunt them down and then kill them and then drag them to this lake, uh, load them with stones and then drown them. That's the actual sacrifice. So when you're providing gifts for your friends, uh, you know it's that's why the thought that counts because you're you're considering what it is that you know would be best for them, and then you're going out, of course, expending energy to find it, and then exchanging probably money um, for the for the gift, and then wrapping it and, and turning it over. So. 
sacrifice and gifting is essentially the very political economics and what differentiates um, sacrifice from equivalent exchange being very very similar I would say is the relationship between two parties in sacrifice both both parties the giver and the receiver are emotionally involved in the exchange I would say that with equivalent exchange you only one party the the giver is is emotionally involved while sorry the yeah the while the receiver doesn't you know doesn't really care There's a uh, there's an anime called Full Metal Alchemist, <laughs> and I know I'm gonna refer to a uh, cartoon here to illustrate a concept, not like prove a point. But anyway, um, in the anime they have something called the the first law of equivalent exchange, which reads: humankind cannot gain anything without first giving something in return. Um, to obtain something of equal value, oh, to obtain something of equal value must be lost. And essentially, that would be a picture like a uh, an engineer on an old school locomotive, like steam locomotive, and he's expending energy by lifting a shovel and and scooping coal into a furnace. The train, the locom the locomotive. Uh, reciprocates by moving forward. Coal goes in, heat, then the train moves. The engineer cares in this exchange because he's using up his own energy and the energy stored in the coal to get the train to move. The train takes essentially that that element that has value and moves, but it doesn't care in return. It's just reacting to a cause and then you have an effect. So I would say that if you and, and it doesn't stop on uh, th that exchange doesn't stop with with um, inanimate objects. For instance if you go to a store uh, for bread you submit five dollars to the, the cashier who takes your money and you walk out of the store with, with um, bread. You are invested in that transaction because you went out to the store and you exchanged your hard-earned currency for a loaf of bread. The cashier doesn't care. Um, it could be automated. It, it wouldn't matter. It's just taking your money and then moving on to the next customer. The, the cashier's concern is in his or her um, exchange with the company where that person exchanges time and labor for a paycheck, which you're not concerned with at all. So um, I would say it's it's a question of, of how many parties are invested in the exchange. That matters between a sacrifice slash gift or equivalent exchange. Um, It, it's it's a lot like Adam Smith said in Wealth of Nations, um, every man uh, becomes in some measure a merchant, uh, which is true. Uh, people throughout their lives in every relationship engages in either a, a one-sided transaction, um, but for the most part, it's it's a constant you know give and take with other people. Um, the the birthday example was was one of them. Uh, if you're negotiating with your kids to tell them to go to bed um, on time, um, you know, and then they can go to the park during the weekend or something, that's you know that's an exchange, and both of you are invested in in, tr in that negotiation. Um, same thing if you go and try to negotiate for a raise at work, uh, both you and your su supervisor would be invested in that negotiation. A marriage proposal 
uh, same thing as well. Um, so yeah, that's how I differentiate sacrifice and uh, equivalent exchange. There's very, very few acts that we engage in that's purely altruistic that can be considered a sacrifice without some concern of, of gain um, at the end. Um, either, you know, a political or economic. And under economics, I include things like, you know, gaining a blessing um, if, if you're concerned with, you know, a, a God's favor, for instance. So basically, you know, anything that on your account book shows you know, what goes in and what goes out. The closest thing that I personally ever do that could be even remotely considered um, a sacrifice is uh, kind of in the purest sense, but not really. Um, it has to do with the, the pennies. I, I don't hold much value for these. They, their worth in my eyes is worth less than a penny, which is ironic since to make a penny it costs more than a penny. But I, I harbor very little value for these. So when I go to the store and I get pennies as change, when I leave the store, I will drop pennies en route to my car or back home uh, randomly, like on the sidewalk or the street. And I do this versus throwing them in like a river or wishing well or whatever, because my hope is that somebody will find them and pick them up. Not because it's a great fortune, but because those people who pick up pennies usually subscribe to the notion that picking up a penny will provide you luck for the day or whatever. So I don't even have to, you know, invest like personal power to, you know, add luck to this. The fact that this is a symbol of luck for somebody else means it harbors for other people more worth than one cent. While for me, it harbors less than one cent. So I drop them on the street. I expect nothing in return. I don't imagine that there's a third party out there, you know, taking notes that I'm, you know, leaving a extremely tiny fortune for somebody else to pick up. I I just drop them because I don't need them, and if somebody else can feel just a little bit luckier, then it it makes sense in the grander scheme that they should find this and find value in this, because I don't. So that's the closest thing to a sacrifice that I do. Uh, everything else is essentially... trying to find some gain. Uh, you know, I exchange something for either an immediate benefit or for an expected benefit in the future, or returning a favor to somebody else if they've done something for me in the past, and, and or uh, I'm putting in a certain amount of energy and or matter into a situation and expecting a result roughly equivalent um, in return. So in either case, I'm expecting the, the balance to find itself. The pennies of such small, small value altogether is the only thing that I don't kind of fit into that scheme. But again, it's just a penny for me. So yeah, that's, that's my two cents on the subject of sacrifice and equivalent exchange. I'm looking forward to seeing what other people have to say on the matter. And um, once again, everybody, uh, uh, bright blessings for Astara, and enjoy the rest of your week. Cheers.